Taking amazing photos is something that requires patience, something of a creative eye and a bit of luck. We're not going to be able to cover the entire topic here, but I can provide a few tips that will help. For starters then, make sure that you always think about your foreground, your middle ground and your background. Think about your composition in terms of where the subject, you know, the focus of your photo is and what the background is like around this point. From there, try mixing things up and making it more interesting. Interesting is the important word here because a lot of pictures are simply not interesting. Look at most people's holiday snaps, for instance, and they'll consist of people standing cross-armed in front of a, you know, some kind of backdrop. And it's such a generic picture that it's completely boring, with no reference or scale. You know, it's impossible to get a sense of what it felt like to be there. They may as well be in front of a green screen. Meanwhile, the front-on shot of that person, smiling awkwardly, evokes no emotion and, you know, it isn't particularly flattering. So, what could you do to make the picture look more interesting? Well, you might move the focal point slightly. How about putting the person on the left of the image or on the right? How about twisting the camera slightly? You can also get lower down and take the shot from underneath in order to make the person look bigger and create even more of a sense of scale. Next, you will think about creating depth and three dimensions. To do this, you might decide to add something to the foreground and keep it out of focus. How about a leaf on a tree, for instance, or even a blade of grass? Having something lead into the background from the foreground is another great way to create depth and scale, you know, such as a garden path. Instead of having the person looking at the camera, why not have them gazing wistfully into the distance, or sitting on a ledge, or relaxing in the sun? This evokes much more emotion and makes it easier for the viewer to imagine being there. You can also have them doing something more interesting and perhaps you're know, interacting with the environment. They could be leaning against a tree, for instance, or they could have a leg up on a rock. This also provides something else to give a sense of scale and perspective. Blurring out the background is also an option, and you can do this by zooming in on your subject and then focusing on them. Some cameras have a function called macros, especially for this, while phone cameras will often let you double tap on the item that you want to focus on. While taking these photos, you also need to think about lighting. Lighting is something that amateur photographers will often forget, but it makes a huge difference and can make a picture much more flattering, or less so, for the person in it. Aim for Rembrandt lighting, which means you'll be lighting the photo from the side so that half of the person's face is lit. This creates more dynamic and interesting shadows. Always avoid having the light source behind the subject, as this creates glare. The exception is when you're purposely creating a silhouette effect or a glare effect. When you're taking photos of your activities, try to find items that tell a bigger story. For instance, if you want to tell the story of a dinner party, then often you can do this with a half-empty glass of wine and a cleared plate in the background. Want to evoke the feeling of working into the night? Well, instead of taking a photo of you working into the night, how about a photo of your keyboard next to a mug of coffee lit by a desk lamp spotlight? These kinds of photos are far more interesting and poetic than photos that are, you know, on the nose. Now comes one of the most important aspects of Instagram, which can completely make or break your photos, regardless of how good they were to begin with. Filters essentially apply a collection of effects to your pictures, altering the contrast, the warmth, saturation, sharpness, blur, and more. Others might also apply effects like sepia or black and white. The filters available at the time of making this video are Lark, Rays, Juno, Slumber, Crema, Ludwig, Arden, Perpetua, Amaro, Mayfair, Rise, Hudson, Valencia, X Pro 2, Sierra, Willow, Lo Fi, Early Bird, Brana, Inkwell, Hefe, and Nashville. Each filter also tends to be particularly useful for evoking a particular theme or expressing an idea. Some make your image look vintage or retro. Others make your image look more elegant or artistic. 
you need to think what you want to achieve with your photo. At the same time, you also now have the option of manually adjusting the effects on your photos, you know, something that wasn't available until relatively recently. Options to adjust include adjust for changing the angle and zooming in, brightness for altering the brightness, contrast for changing the difference between different tones, structure, and this essentially adds detail to your images, warmth, this brings out or subdues the warmth in your images so you can have more reds, oranges and other warm tones or more blues, whites and cool tones. Saturation and this is the amount of color in the image. Turn it all the way down for black and white or all the way up for overly vibrant dreamlike colors. Color and this lets you choose a certain color to add more of in your image. Fade and this lets you create the effect of your image having faded somewhat and this can make it feel older. Highlights and this increases or decreases the whites and light colors in your image. Shadows and this increases or decreases the blacks and other dark colors. Vignette, this adds darker corners to your photo to highlight the center. Tilt shift, adds blur functionality or surrounding the image in a circle and this lets you create the sensation of movement or focus. Using the linear blur in particular can make the landscape look miniaturized which is a fun effect. The secret to using filters and effects well? That would be less is more. If you overdo your use of filters this can end up looking cheap as though you can't take good photos on your own. At the same time, it can seem as though you're overexcited with all the options and that you're trying to use as many of them as possible. This is actually the reason that Comic Sans is considered to be such a poor choice of font. Comic Sans came with the original version of Word when people were first getting access to word processing. As the de facto fun choice of typeface, everyone started using Comic Sans in all their work and all this did was offend legitimate graphic designers who could tell that the font had actually been very poorly designed. That said, using one of the filters occasionally when you think your picture could benefit from looking a little retro, you know, a little vintage or a little artsy, is a great way to keep things fresh. Likewise, you should use blurs to make your camera look more impressive than it really is or to highlight certain points of interest in your pictures. Tilt shifting is also a good choice a lot of the time. A lot of scenery pictures look even better when you slightly turn up the saturation. Of course there's only so much you can do with a few filters and a few effects. If you want your photos to truly look amazing you need to think outside the box and start using professional photo editing software. There's no reason, for instance, that you can't first do some editing in Photoshop or Illustrator before you upload your image to Instagram. Using Photoshop, for instance, you might opt to remove blemishes and spots from your face or the face of your subject or model. This is important if you're trying to sell a particular lifestyle. You can't look confident, sexy and successful if you have a cold sore. And you can find out more about Photoshop and Illustrator from Adobe.com. For lighter image editing, another good app is Pixlr. Pixlr is a photo editing app that lets you not only edit your images by applying a few effects and text, but also by rearranging them. You can use Pixlr to create little collages, for instance, or mood boards. And this can be a great tool if you want to take three photos from a different event and arrange them in a way that tells a story. Likewise, it's also very useful if you want to add some text. Pixlr is practically designed to be used with Instagram and this is a match made in heaven when you use the two together. You might also want to try Mimi Generator which you'll find here at mimigenerator.net if you're interested in making funny memes. Memes are often a safe way to get lots of likes and shares as are inspirational quotes. You can get lots of motivational poster makers online too. Another great feature on Instagram is the ability to upload short videos which is somewhat similar to Vine or Snapchat. You can use this to talk directly to your viewers, you know, to tell a story or to convey something that you can't put across in words. 
You can even place a small advert here, although again you don't want to be too on the nose in terms of marketing. Something that's currently very popular is to use an app called Lapsit, which you can read about here at lapsit.com. Now as you may have guessed by the name, Lapsit is a time-lapse app, which means it will film you for a while by taking photos once every 1, 10 or 60 seconds. This then creates a video that shows you changing position rapidly and which can tell a much better story in a few seconds than a regular video. Lapsit can be used, for instance, to show you and your friends playing in the sea or on the beach if your video is about travel. It can be used to show time passing while you work at the computer. It can be used to show a workout in a short space of time, you know, lots of different things, and it's definitely one to consider adding. In the next video, I'll talk you through how you go about using tags to make your photos easy to find.